Hi everyone. Welcome back to Reviving Hearts uh, and with Vicki. I hope you're I hope you're having a great week. I wanted to do a video this week um, and really focus on one uh, area that involves very much God in us, and that is God's pursuit of us. Um, and I wanted to bring to you this question. Have you ever in your life, uh, as long as you lived so far, have you ever had someone pursue you uh, just with anything? I mean, we've had, it's, it's interesting, if you go to a car lot and they think you're looking to buy a car, you will quickly be pursued. Will you not? Yes, you will. You will have someone coming out, hey, can I help you? What, you know, what are you looking for today? I mean, that's a form of pursuit. Um, Solicitors that call us on the phone, they're pursuing your business. There's a lot of different ways of pursuit, but what I'm wanting to focus on is more specifically when someone pursues you in, say, a romantic relationship, a uh, boyfriend girlfriend relationship, uh, when you first met your husband and he was pursuing you to marry you, um, that kind of pursuit. The pursuit of someone that just really wants to be with you, wants to get to know you, is really attracted to you, or even just loves you and wants to pursue you with gifts and kind words and time spent together. When someone pursues us like that, I don't know about you, but I think it would make you feel very special, very valued. Uh, I think the way so often we as people don't feel valued is when people don't pursue us. They don't seek us out. Uh, if you have someone in your life that says they love you, or maybe even say as, says you're the most important person in their life, but you don't see that pursuit, you don't see this person really coming after you to spend time with you, to talk to you, to get to know you, you're going to begin to question the words, aren't you? Because really pursuit shows genuine feeling, genuine intention. So I want to look at this pursuit issue. Um, if you haven't experienced an actual person pursuing you at this level, now I can't honestly say that I have. Uh, I am married, but quite frankly, when my husband and I got together, um, it wasn't the kind of pursuit you see in movies. You know, in movies like I love Jane Austen movies the old romantic movies back in the day where, you know, men pursued women. And yeah, women were kind of on the lookout for a husband as well, but it was really the man that was seen as the pursuer. He was the initiator of, yes, I want this relationship. And with my husband and I, I think it was, you know, not, it was somewhat mutual, but he didn't pursue me. He didn't pursue me with you know, flowers and candy and all that kind of stuff like some ladies have experienced. And I know some of you out there probably are like, oh man, no, I mean, my husband really pursued me. I mean, we dated a while and he was totally into the gifts or he said lots of wonderful words. And, you know, if, if you experienced that, then I'm sure at the time you felt extremely blessed, extremely um, valuable, and, and you definitely felt wanted. I mean, let's face it, when someone's pursuing you romantically, it, it's, it's a pretty clear indicator they want you. They want to be with you. They like you. They love you. They want your time. Uh, they want your energy. They just really are in pursuit. We pursue things that are valuable to us. And I'm talking in relationship form right now, but, you know, we pursue a lot of things in this life. People, some people pursue careers like it's the most important thing on the earth they just pursue 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 more money uh more status more promotion in their career they pursue um sports they pursue there's all kind of things we can pursue as far as things go but i'm looking at the pursuit of someone you love and how much you're willing to pursue them to get their love in return and that's what I'm looking at here, because I know we are talking here about our relationship with God as Christians, 
how we become Christians. And really, I'm kind of starting at the basic foundation here, okay? This is the basic foundation. The foundation is, is God pursuing you? Has God pursued you? If you're already a Christian and you say, hey, I've already, you know, I am a Christian. God already has me. Then I just want you just to think about while you're listening to this. How did he pursue you? Do you remember the different ways that he pursued you? I know for the most part, God doesn't just pursue us one time. And then the one time he draws us to him and we get saved. Usually he pursues for a period of time. And we, in that period of time, often don't always respond to each time he pursues, right? I mean, I remember, um, just for an example, since I only know my experience, but I want you to be thinking, you know, about your experience and how you were pursued, all the different ways you were pursued, or, and maybe even now, if you're not even a Christian, you might be seeing this and thinking about, hmm, pursuit. You know, I'm going to let you know how God pursues, what this looks like. When I was a child and really time, really many times when, when children are young, um, God begins to pursue, if you're not born into a Christian home, that right away can share the truth with you and share God with you, he then pursues from external means. Now, for me, that was when I was pretty young. I was in elementary school and living in a neighborhood where there were some kids across the street and um, they went to church on a regular basis with their parents and they um, invited us to church. We went. Um, it was something to do. That's kind of how we saw it. It was just something to do. Uh, you're a kid. You're, you don't understand the real realities of God or, or religion or any of that. So you just go. It's something fun to do. And of course, they can make it fun. And that's one way that God pursues. I remember even as a, as a kid in elementary school sitting in church, there was a couple services where I wasn't with the kids group. I was actually in with the with the adults. And I remember altar calls. I remember them calling people up and, and, and asking them to be saved. And um, I didn't understand any of that and didn't feel that real draw, uh, not, not that genuine drawing inside. You know, I think as a kid, sometimes you follow because it's just the emotion in it or, or you don't want to feel left behind. You know, everybody's, everybody in your row is like going up. So like you go up. Um, but that was God pursuing me. He was pursuing me in elementary school. I was not raised in a Christian home. I do believe my mom and dad were aware of God. Uh, they knew of God, but they weren't living for God. They did not know God personally themselves. And so I was not raised in a home um, that told me how to have personal relationship with God. So God used means from the outside. And he does. Just so you know, God loves every single person born in this planet. The minute you're born, you're born into a fallen world, you're born into a fallen nature, but you're also born into the love of God. That love is there instantly, okay? You instantly have someone who adores you beyond what you can even actually mentally comprehend, but he's there right away. And then there's all these different times he pursues you in life. For me, it was as a young child. For many, it's as a young child. And if you don't respond as a young child, he may pursue you as a teenager. Maybe as a teenager, you end up uh, finding a friend at school that's a Christian and they try to witness to you or invite you to church or maybe invite you to their youth group. Um, and you go and you decide, yeah, I'm not I'm for it or not for it. Nah, I don't think this is for me. And you walk away. But again, just keep in mind, he's pursuing you. It was, it was a time of pursuit. And then if you make it into your early adulthood, there's other ways he pursues, you know, and keep in mind, God pursues, oh my goodness, my goodness, you can hear a song that really touches your heart about the love of God. You could be strolling through television or nowadays through YouTube or through just different social media and come across areas where God is being taught on, or maybe there's a movie about God, I mean, or a song that really sings the goodness of God. I mean, he uses different things to come across your path. Maybe a coworker that's a Christian will begin to talk about how God healed their body or did something. These are times of pursuit. 
He's pursuing. He's trying to get your attention. And he's trying to show you, I want you. Do you have anybody in your life now or any time before now that you knew they just wanted you? And I don't mean they wanted you for their own means, okay? We've all met people in life that wanted us for their own means. In other words, I call them users, okay? People that want to know you because you could help them. God is not looking for your help. He's not looking for anything you can do for him. He's looking for you because he loves you and you alone. I want you to listen to the scripture I'm going to read out of Hebrews chapter 1. I want you to hear this. This is the Amplified Bible I'm using. In many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth and in different ways, God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets. But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of a son, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. Also by and through whom he created the worlds, he created the reaches of space and the ages of time. Jesus is the sole expression of the glory of God. Now remember I mentioned in what the last video that Jesus, when he walked the earth, was the personification of God. In other words, he was God in the flesh. He showed you this is God and this is God's will. So when you see what Jesus did, how he went about doing good to everyone, that is God's will. So his intention toward man is never negative. He don't look to use man, to abuse man. Uh, that's the enemy's plan. God wants you and he pursues you out of pure love for you. He simply loves you and he wants to bestow that love on you. So he pursues, looking for the time that he can reach you, that he can get across to you. So Jesus is the sole expression of the glory of God. Jesus is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. Now back to this verse in verse 2 where he says he has spoken to us in the person of Jesus. And before that in verse 1, he spoke to us in the old times through the prophets. When you read the Bible and you read in the Old Testament, this is before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see all the ways that God pursued man. He was constantly pursuing man. And you will also see that when he got a hold of man, when man responded to him, he blessed him. He gave him a great life. His intention for you is for good and not evil. Jeremiah 29, 11 in the Bible says what his intentions are. He loves you. Now, everyone's heard this scripture. Even as a kid, you probably heard, you know, John 3, 16. That God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. He loves you. And I'm going to add something here, something the Lord spoke to me years ago when I really, I did not feel loved as a human being. I just did not feel loved as a human being before I found God. It was hard to find a love that was really genuine. Um, but God showed me after I was a Christian for a while that if I had been the only person on the planet, I mean, we got billions and trillions of people on the planet and have been since the beginning. But if I was the only one and I was bound in sin and bound with the nature of Satan, God still would have sent Jesus to save me. Just me. 
And that came across as a revelation. And a revelation is not something I get in the head. And, and you know, because anything you hear here, you can kind of forget about. I mean, it's like in one ear and out the other. But a revelation from God is something that goes deep inside. And when you hear it, it's like, oh, and it's like the light bulb goes on. And that's something you have. That suddenly becomes something you know without a doubt. Like, you know, the back of your hand, you know this. And he just dropped that in me. If you were the only one on the planet, I would have pursued you. And I would have sent Jesus for you. I wouldn't have changed the plan. And that speaks volumes about the kind of love that God has for you and for every individual on the planet. He loves you so much that the reason the fall took place, some people think, well, why did the fall even have to take place? Why did God have to put the tree of good and evil in the garden in the first place so that man, you know, chose and went against God? Well, because love does not coerce. If you're in any kind of human relationship where somebody's forcing you to love them, that is a completely unhealthy relationship. Love does not control you. Love does not go against your will and force you to do anything. So if you're in a relationship where somebody's saying, if you love me, you're going to do this. If you love me, you're going to do this. Or they're being abusive and saying they love you. That's not love. Love does not force. Love does not coerce. The perfect love that God is, is a love that says, I love you so much that I want you to choose me. I'm not going to force you to choose me. I love you so much. I want you to have a free choice. And this is how God pursues us. He pursues us. Think of the different movies you've watched. Those wonderful romantic movies where a man sets his sights on a woman and he just says, oh my goodness, I, she's amazing. She's amazing. And he begins to pursue her. He pursues her with flowers, candy, love letters, um, saying, hey, can I spend time with you? Can we get together? Let's go out and have a good time together. He pursues you with good things. How does it make you feel? It makes you feel loved. It makes you feel valuable. It makes you feel wanted. It makes you smile. It gives you a reason to get up every day, right? I mean, when you're in that kind of relationship and somebody wants you to that degree, it's, it's for us on the planet, it's probably one of the most special things that can happen to a person is when somebody pursues you with that kind of love and that kind of interest and that kind of concern and care and desire. It's wonderful. And I just want you to know that's how God pursues us. It's how he's pursued man for years, long time, how he's pursued man. Ever since man rebelled and chose something other than God, God was already in action as to how he was going to turn that thing around and how he was going to pursue man and convince man to come back to him that he's good and nothing outside of him is good. Nothing. And even if you think you have a good life outside of God, you're deceived. Or even if it feels good right now, it won't last. Somewhere down the road is not going to be good. God pursues us with a pure love, an unending love. He doesn't just love you today and then tomorrow he gets in a mood where he don't love you. He loves you consistently, constantly, every single day. Whether you're good or bad, whether you look good or you look bad, <laughs> he loves you at your worst. And how many people can we say do that? You know, sometimes people love us when we're on our you know, when we're doing good and we're helpful and we're being there for them. But if we hit a bad point and we're not there for them so much, are they still going to love us? Or are they going to look at that and go, wait, wait a minute. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. No, the love of God remains. It's not based on your performance. It's not based on whether you're good or bad. 
whether you talk nice or talk dirty. It's not based on that. He loves you. He pursued, he pursued us when we were still in sin. He doesn't just pursue you when you start going to church or you start thinking about God. He pursues you when you're thinking nothing about him. He pursues you when you're living for the devil. He pursues you when you are just loving yourself and you're very self-seeking and everything's about me, me, me. He loves you then. Jesus came and died for a world that didn't want him and didn't love him. And he still did it. How many of us would do that? How many of us would give and give and give and pursue somebody and pursue somebody that's constantly, consistently rejecting us? Somebody that keeps saying, get away from me. I don't want anything to do with you. And yet we would continue to pursue them. See, in our humanness, if somebody rejects us to that degree and says, just get away from me. I don't want anything to do with you. We'd stop. We'd be like, okay, gotcha. I'm done with you. Not with God. He will pursue you to the grave. Now, once you're in the grave, you're past pursuing your decisions set for eternity. But he'll pursue you all that time. And I want you just to consider what are the ways he pursued you? How many times did he pursue you before you finally surrendered to him? Think about that pursuit. I just want to leave you this week with, please think about this this week. I am being pursued with a love that I've never gotten from anybody else, with a love that I've probably never extended to anybody else. It's a love that's, that's it's a heavenly love. It's a supernatural love. It's not of this world. You're being pursued with that love every moment of the day until you finally respond to him. So I just want to leave that with you this week. You're being pursued. Take notice of it. Think about the different ways that God has tried to tap into your life, tried to speak into your life through somebody or something. Think about that. And have you received it or rejected it? But think about how many times that's happened or is happening still. He's pursuing you. He loves you. That's my word for this week. God loves you. Right where you're at. He knows you personally, even though you may or may not know him personally. But he is pursuing you. He thinks you're valuable. He created you to live a great life. And he's pursuing you to bring you into that. So I'm leaving you with that this week. You're being pursued. Or if you're already a Christian, think about how many times he pursued you before you became a Christian. And just think about. Go back and remember that. And realize he's pursued you like nobody else. And he never gave up until you responded. That's love. Nobody loves you like that. That's valuable. Think about that this week. Think about this that th this week. And then we're going to go on into the next step of salvation next week. So this week, the word is the pursuit of God. He's pursuing you. You with faults and weaknesses and struggles. He loves you beyond words. Think about that this week. And I will be back with you next week and we will look at your most valuable asset. So stay with me. Be sure you subscribe so you can get notified when that video is released next week. Have a great rest of the week and keep remembering this week. Don't forget, don't forget you're loved. That love never stops. It's not based on you. You are being pursued. And if you've already responded, he's still pursuing you. Keep that in mind. God loves you. Have a great week. See you next week.